morning, church, and welcome to worship this day on January 10th, 2021, with the communities of Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church and Frazee United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Kevin Gregory, and it is a joy getting to continue to worship with you all in this virtual space. And whether you're joining by phone, whether you're sitting in your living room, whether you're watching on your tablet or your cell phone, we're glad that you are here to worship with us this day. A few announcements before we begin. First off, I want to really thank Kathy Techham again, who led us in worship last week, who preached uh, as I had the week off. And it was a blessing getting to hear from Kathy as we celebrated Epiphany last Sunday together with the story of the Magi. For the Joyful Spirit folks, we have the exciting news that the closing date for the Wadena UMC building is this Friday, January 15th. We rejoice in that news and we are excited that we will be beginning our official building campaign to raise money for the construction of the new Joyful Spirit building this coming week. Work on the building, as you know, has already begun, but we're excited to take the next few steps to make our new church home a reality. You'll find more information in the newsletter and in your mailbox very soon. Well, we also have a group that is getting together this Tuesday on the 12th at the Wadena UMC building to begin cleaning it once more just before we hand over the keys on Friday. They're gathering beginning around 9.30 a.m. and hope that you can be there with your servant heart and your mask on. And we hope that you'll join us as we begin to prepare that building for its new owners. For our Frazee folks, our Ad Council met this last week over Zoom to check in as we began this new year. We talked about some, we talked about some of the new, um, we talked uh, some about our new church home and, and the process now of going about receiving new bids as we begin to prepare for construction, hopefully sometime this spring or early summer. There's much happening in the life of both churches that is extremely exciting as we follow God into the future. Well, we come together this morning, though, this first Sunday after Epiphany with heavy hearts and heavy minds as we recall the events of this last week in Washington, D.C. As we mourn, as we pray, as we reflect, we remember this morning our baptisms. We remember the water. As we read and as we recall Christ's baptism, we remember that we said yes to God. And we ask once again what it is that that means. May God use us in powerful ways this day. As we come together today for worship, may we take a moment to breathe, to be present here, to humbly approach this time, ready to meet God's Spirit, ready to be still, ready to open ourselves to what God is saying or doing this day. And so I invite you, before we join together in this call to worship, to take a deep breath. And then take another one. And then take one more. To breathe in God's spirit, to be present here in this space this day. May we join together in these centering words. God of grace and love, you have known you have loved and known us even before we knew you. May we respond faithfully today, tomorrow, and every day. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is All Creatures of Our God and King, the piano recording which is taken from our United Methodist Discipleship Ministries website. If you have a hymnal in front of you, if you might, it's number 62 in the hymnal, but otherwise the words will be here in the video for you as we sing together. May we join our voices in song and in worship this day.
We'll move now into a time of prayer as we lift up our prayer concerns, those that we know and those that we don't know. And if there are joys and concerns that we're unaware of or that go unmentioned in this service, we hope that you'll take the time to leave a comment in the post for this service, a comment in the YouTube video, a comment in the Facebook post, to email myself at the email address that you find listed here, or for the Joyful Spirit folks, you can also continue to email and contact our lay leader, Kathy Techham. And that info will also appear at the very end of this worship service in the last uh, 30 seconds in the last slide or so. But let us continue in an attitude and a spirit of prayer as we lift up those folks and those names on our prayer list this day. And for both churches, we want to continue praying for all of those that have been affected in our communities by COVID-19. And as a reminder, our annual conference, the Minnesota Annual Conference, is still in the red phase of the regathering plan, and we are continuing online worship only for the foreseeable future. A joyful spirit. We want to continue to pray for the families of Lorraine Taggart and Janet Maloney. Both of their funeral services were held this last week, and we continue to be in prayer for them and for their families, for their friends, for their communities, for all of those that grieve and mourn their lives this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From Joyful Spirit, we also want to continue to lift up Harold and Eunice Reesberg, Sandy and Barry Pratt, Gary Packard and Gwen Thunberg, Myra Peterson and Barb Neuschwander, Lois Johnson and Judy Malone and Kathy Hill and Lena Porter. And so friends, in the mix of all the different ways that we've come to worship this day, may we go to our God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we gather together as your people in this season of epiphany in this new year. In this time where we find ourselves mourning or grieving, angry or afraid, confused or frustrated, we come together only a few days into this new year, still waiting for the last year to have some semblance of an end. God, may we seek you, seek your peace, your love, your healing this day. God, we pray for those in our communities, those isolated and alone, those sick and in pain, those suffering and seeking guidance and treatment. We pray for those in our communities mourning loved ones, for the families of Lorraine Taggart and Janet Maloney. May all those know your peace and your comfort. We pray for those in our communities and our towns suffering from COVID-19. They receive proper treatment that they quarantine, but we all continue to take precaution to wear our masks, to do whatever it is that we can to stop the spread, even as some of us in our community begin to receive the vaccine. We give thanks that for that crisis, albeit a bit of a ways away, there is an end. But God, this day we gather with the images, with the sounds, with the voices, with the stories of the ransacking of the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. this week. We lament what is happening in our country. We lament the rise of rampant misinformation and conspiracy theories, and we decry the use of violence and insurrection. As followers of Jesus the Christ, we recommit ourselves once again this day to truth, to the truth of the gospel, the truth of facts, the truth of love and grace. May we seek to be people of truth, a people who reflect the values of the kingdom of God and we seek to be a people who bring healing into this hurting and broken world that so desperately needs it. Above all, God, as we come together this day remembering our baptisms, and we pledge to be followers of you. May we come together remembering Christ's teachings and how we are to live as we pray together once again this prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I had a really difficult time writing my sermon this week. I started it multiple times, and I struggled with it as the events of this week unfolded even after the events of Wednesday as consequences ramped up. So I'm coming to you this morning still from my home. 
but I'll be back in the sanctuary of the, of the UCC Church in Wadena, where Joyful Spirits currently house, next week. And we'll hear the scripture reading and the sermon, and then immediately after we'll sing the hymn, Wade in the Water, from the faith we sing in both. But now I invite you to join me in hearing the words that begin our scripture from Genesis 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. God called the darkness night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. I got out a blessing to the reading and hearing of these familiar words. Thanks be to God. And our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Mark. I'm reading from my iPad, from an app of the Bible on my iPad. But I invite you to hear these gospel words this day from Mark 1 verses 4 through 11. And John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of, of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were baptized him, by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in those days, Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven and it said, You are my Son, the Beloved, and with you I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God this day. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures have been read and your word has been proclaimed, we might hear with joy, we might be challenged by what it is you say to us this day. Amen. He grows up so fast, doesn't he? It always makes me laugh a little bit that we skip ahead so quickly. We move from Christmas to Epiphany to Jesus' baptism every year, as if 30 or so years of a man's life can be condensed into a few weeks' time. Jesus is no longer a baby. We've left the manger behind, and we're in the season of Epiphany. Jesus has grown up. He's about to be baptized. The Christmas trees have come down, although I confess that mine is still up. The decorations are put away, the purple and pink candles packed into the cabinet that they stay in for the next 300 days or so. It is time to begin again. And begin again we already have. It seems like only a few days into this new year that the allure of a new 2021 is already worn off. You all know what happened this week. On Wednesday, as the day of Epiphany arrived, white supremacist groups and violent insurrectionists stormed the United States Capitol while Congress was attempting to certify the Electoral College results from the presidential election. Incited by misinformation and conspiracy theories, the nation's capital was breached for the first time since 1814 during the War of 1812. And members of the Senate and the House of Representatives were herded to undisclosed locations, along with the Vice President, for fear of their safety. 
only to be able to return late in the night to finish what they had started and certify the election results. It was a day that we will always remember. It was a day that shared more alike with the year that we just left behind that many of us are urging very quickly to forget and move on from. But we can't. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Like all of us, I'm still attempting to process all that has happened this week. I confess to you that I did not get much work done on Wednesday, glued both to my television and refreshing my news feed on my computer. I've cried on and off in the last few days. I'm most strongly driving to Wadena early on Thursday morning, listening to accounts of reporters who had been in the Capitol on Wednesday, listening to the sense of shock in their voices, but also their complete lack of surprise. I remembered my own visit to the Capitol a few years ago, on vacation with my brother for a few days, as I saw images of hallways and rotundas that I'd visited overturned and in disarray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning we find ourselves in the season of epiphany, the season of sudden revelation, proclamation, discovery, renewal, manifestation, as the word epiphany evokes. We're reminded of the Magi who Kathy talked about last Sunday and their gifts that they brought the Christ child. We're reminded that that child grew up. And shortly after the Magi gave their gifts, the family fled to Egypt and a tyrant commissioned a mass casualty event of toddlers in the region in order to hold on to power. Two-year-olds, boys and girls killed Parents torn from children, convicted of a non-crime that their child might be Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. It makes sense that we're in the season of Epiphany this day. The shock and awe of Wednesday and the trauma of 2020 still lingers fresh in our minds. We need renewal. We need discovery. We need revelation. We need forgiveness. We need what this season and this day have to offer. We're at a crossroads, and it's time to make some decisions. It's time to confess. It's time to begin again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many faith leaders have already released statements condemning what happened. Our Bishop included in the Minnesota Annual Conference, and as they should. But the most shocking images and pictures from Wednesday were of those who were there to incite violence with signs and clothing reading, Jesus saves. As if God and Jesus had somehow sanctioned the work that they were about to do. We ought to be as clear and as blunt as possible when we say that Jesus in no way can condone what happened on Wednesday. The rabbi who went from town to town preaching and healing, who implored people to repent, to love their neighbors and pray for those who persecute them, who was violently killed for challenging the powerful people of his day, is not the Jesus that was on display on Wednesday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning we might be asking, where Jesus is. It's nice and good to name evil, to say what happened was wrong, but how are we being called to respond? How are we to begin again? We find ourselves in scripture today with the ultimate in the beginning, in the beginning also of Mark's gospel. And in both of those stories, God is acting, hovering over the water, watching from the heavens, speaking into the void, speaking into what's possible, shining a light into the darkness. And there's a response in both of those stories. The light was good. There was evening and there was morning. Jesus came up out of the water, just like we came up out of the water, knowing that God looked at him as beloved, that he was loved, that God looked at him and called him good. Commitment and confession, revelation 
and restitution beginning again. In both cases, the world was never the same. Days and nights were created, and Jesus began his public ministry in this, the most public of ways, new beginnings. This is what baptism is about. You may not remember your baptism. You might have been an infant. You might have been much younger. But you were baptized and confirmed. You said yes to responding, to following Christ, to aligning yourself with the God of love and grace and peace. We have the dates and the certificates to prove it. And friends, I want to make very clear that as United Methodist says, Christians, we oppose the work of violence and fear-mongering. We spoke yes at our baptisms to the question, do you renounce the evil forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? We spoke yes at our baptisms to the question, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And we spoke yes at our baptisms to the question, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? The answer to those questions require us to say what was on display on Wednesday was not who we are. Christian nationalism, white supremacy, these are not the ways of our church. This is not the God of Jesus Christ. This is not who God and Jesus are. We remember our baptisms this day because we remember that we said yes that we remember that we committed our lives to love and to grace, to healing and to justice, to reconciliation, to relationship, to community, to accountability, to peace, to mercy, to the God who looks at each and every one of us and calls us beloved and says, follow me. The God who spoke into the void and created. The God who is still speaking into our world, speaking into our void, who is separating the light from the darkness. The God who was present at Christ's baptisms, who was present at our baptisms, who claimed us and called us to recommit ourselves to the kingdom of God and who is working to bring about and create such a kingdom. And such work begins here. It begins now. It begins with us. It might begin slowly. It happens every time that we confess and we repent, when we turn to love, when we commit to truth, and when we promise to be better. As the events of Wednesday began, I was listening to uh, this song called Theseus by a band that I've newly discovered called the Oh Hellos. And I've continued to listen to that same song on repeat as I've worked through the events of this week. And I want to share with you the second verse in the bridge to close today. And it goes, Whatever kingdom come, it probably won't come quick. No mighty clarion to announce it, no single-use arc to discard in an instant. Like Theseus's ship, we'll fix the busted bits till it's both nothing like and everything that it's always been. It's a wonder we expect a thing to stay the same at all. And maybe that's what it's all about. We keep fixing what we know is only bound to break. What's worth saving is never worth letting go to waste. I want to mend what I've got instead of throwing it away. Ain't nothing come easy. No, nothing comes quick. It's going to hurt like hell to become well. But if we set the bones straight, it'll mend, it'll fix, and we'll be well. May it be so for you and I, because it is that we said yes. May it be so. Thanks.
friends, as we prepare to end this time of worship this day, I invite you to receive this benediction. And then following, you will find ways to continue to contact and connect with us, as well as ways to continue to give of your gifts and your offerings this season. But now, may we go forth, remembering your baptism. May we go forth with these words. Ain't nothing come easy. No, nothing comes quick. It's going to hurt like hell to become well. But if we set the bones straight, it'll mend, it'll fix, and we will be well. We go forth this week to respond, to listen, to work, to pray, to comfort, and to be. And we go forth this day faithfully together.